so in this video I'm going to show you guys how I created this galaxy inspired ultra boost and hopefully you guys enjoy let's go ahead and get into the video What is going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys want to shop this week's top sneaker deals that I curate for you guys every week, check the link in the description. Also, if you guys are interested in buying some of these hydro graphics that I've been doing the hydro dips with, uh, you can check out Kansas Hydro Graphics and I will link them in the description. They have a ton of great options uh, for you guys. And I've done quite a few of these now, obviously for those that have been on the channel, but for those that are new, I will have a playlist for hydro dips in the description as well. For anybody that might've missed, my other ones such as my NMDs that I did here with the kaleidoscopes. I've also done quite a few hex ultra boosts and stuff on the channel. This is one I had never actually did a video on, but I did um, have some hex ones that I've done videos on in the past. So this video though is gonna be focusing on the Galaxy print that I did. They had at least three different Galaxy Cosmos uh, prints. This is actually the Cosmos print, if you will, uh, but I like that it had more hits of red in the print. And I will tell you that this was a complete fail from the beginning and I ended up having to revive this shoe. So it took two days for me to actually make this shoe look decent because I was having problems with the hydrographics sticking on the three stripes of the cage right here, as well as the heel cup section of the shoe. So I wanted to give you guys a couple tips for people that are actually trying to do these hydro dips. Um, it looks like I've inspired a handful of people to actually create their own, but a lot of people have said they've had a lot of problems. And I will tell you that this is not an easy process to do. You have to have pretty much all stars aligned when you dip the product in the water, because if you don't, then um, it could be upsetting to the material. And for some reason, it just won't stick. So. Keep that in mind, it is kind of a one and done sort of thing. However, if you do use like a deglazer or acetone, you can remove what you ended up getting on the shoe and then start over again. And that's what I had to do with this shoe because for some reason it wasn't sticking on the three stripes and again, it wasn't sticking on the heel cup. So I wanted to go ahead and wash it off and restart. So let's go ahead and get into some of the tips for you guys that are actually wanting to hide your dip. So one of the first things that you'll need to do is make sure that the water is not too hot and make sure that it's not too cold. It should be somewhat lukewarm water. In my opinion, that's probably the best temperature. I'm sure you can find some references out there on the internet that gives you the precise temperature if you want to actually calculate that. But in my findings, I had the water too hot once and when you drop the film in, it automatically wrinkles too quickly. Also, if you leave the water outside in the cold overnight, which is something else that I did, it just does not start to activate and like actually ripple quick enough it's, it should take about a minute, but if it doesn't take that long, then that could be problematic. So that is one thing. Make sure the water is a little bit warm. I use hot water out of the tap and then fill up the rest with cold water uh, just to balance it out and just make sure that it feels pretty decent. Uh, the next tip that I would give you guys is when you're actually going through the dipping process that usually I would tape off a perfect square and make sure that all of the dip is actually within that square. But what I found is some materials stretch too far and when the material stretch too far, it causes a ripple. And when that ripple ends up happening in the print, it will transfer on the shoe exactly the same way, which is not a desired result for the most part. So what I ended up doing for this pair was actually not taping down every single corner all the way around like a frame. You do need to make sure that there's some sort of weight on the corners because otherwise the water will go through uh, the print and the other tip is you can't have water on top of the hydrographic if you do get water on the top part You spray the activator spray on and then you go to slap the print on top of the shoe It won't stick so you have to have a dry surface on the top So hopefully those tips are somewhat helpful The other thing that I found extremely helpful for myself is after you end up applying the print Let's say I get a perfect dip. I go through everything is golden and then it looks like everything's staying what I found the best for at least the Ultra Boost cage section here is to leave the print on for at least a minute or two and then go into the sink and then rinse off the um, extra film that ends up happening on top of the print. And also when you go in and start rinsing this off underwater, you don't wanna have too hard of water hitting this because it can just chip off if the water is too aggressive, which we had that problem for one. You don't wanna scrub it too hard because if you scrub it off too hard, 
uh, originally, like you could actually just scrub off the paint because it's still setting. It's, it's not ready to be scrubbed off. So you have to be really, really light and gentle with it and then just kind of like make sure that the film eventually goes smooth and then just make sure it doesn't have that slimy and greasy feeling uh, on top of the shoe. You also do have to use cold water, just another note, but one thing that I found is when I started noticing it rip away, when I went like this under the cold water, I just stopped immediately and waited and waited and waited for it to adhere a little bit more, um, like another couple minutes at least, and then I went back in and checked it and then it actually adhered just fine. So this is on here and this is good. So that is kind of some of my tips. The other thing is I would say is don't use the final product the very first time you're gonna use Hydro dip, like it's not an easy technique to do. Um, it's something that's really important that you try to understand before you go ahead and do the final product because otherwise you'll end up with a mess on the final product. Like I said though, I went through, I, I messed this up quite a bit. I used a cotton ball and some acetone and went through and actually removed everything so it was white again. And then I went back through and uh, did it over again. The other thing is when you're spraying the activator spray over top of the stuff, you don't wanna to use too little, you don't wanna to use too much, you just have to figure out the right amounts. Usually I do like a twice over, so once all the way down and once all the way back up, and then that should be enough to activate the stuff and you could see it. Uh, I did one where I didn't spray enough and it just instantly wrapped up, like shrink wrapped over top of the shoe, like from all corners, and it just didn't, it wouldn't work. So um, definitely have to have enough activator spray. The other thing that I will mention that I was told could actually be beneficial, and I'll try that on another pair in the future that I do with cages and heel cups, is that you can actually get something called an adhesion promoter to promote the adhesion between um, the hydrographic print and the plastic. And I think that that is probably something that's pretty important to actually spray on here beforehand. That way it can actually stick extra well to this material. So just kind of a throwing that out there as another possible option. Now, uh, again, once this does go bad, let's say you put the print on and you actually do a terrible job, then you use the acetone to remove everything. Um, you have to make sure everything is dry before you try to dip it again. So for me, I actually taped off everything on the shoe except for this section, and then I noticed that it wasn't gonna work the way I wanted, so I left the tape on and then let everything dry, and then basically had a white blank canvas to start from over again, and then I re-dipped. And I had to do the redip three times to get the shoes actually perfect. One of the shoes three times, one of them only two, uh, because I wasn't sure if it was actually gonna stick to the cage. I don't know if it was because it was fresh out of the factory or different, but the three stripes, again, I was having problems. Now it again worked perfectly, and it's very, very uh, well on here. So the durability is really good once it actually dries and sets. Um, as you can see, I'm scraping on it, and it actually sticks on pretty good. Now, if you really wanna go the extra mile and you don't want uh, this stuff to chip off and especially if you want a gloss or a matte look on top of here it kind of could look cool with a gloss look you can spray a finisher on top uh, to have like sort of a, a gloss over top of this or a matte um, i didn't do anything over top of this and i think it's going to be just fine but i'm going to wear test it and uh, check it out for people that have been wondering about boost though i already mentioned that this in a different durability test video boost does pretty well you don't have to do actually anything to this it really just actually sticks well on the boost. So you don't have to use any sort of promoters as far as I know. You don't have to use any gloss or anything else over top of it. It just sticks to boost. I, it's my favorite material that this actually works on with sneakers. And this is one of my favorites. I just love this, this hex print as you guys already know. And check this out. I actually did down here on the bottom section right here as well to make it kind of look cool. Um, so. I think I did on both. Yeah, I did on both of them on this one here too. I actually tried to do that with a Galaxy one as well. You could see down here on the bottom, there's a little bit of a Galaxy print, but I didn't do it on the other one. So I was just kind of messing around with it. But anyway, that is kind of some tips on hydro dipping for those that have been asking and for those that have been actually wanting to try this. It's not really that hard of a process. You just need a couple of things to actually make this work and a lot of patience. And it's obviously also really important that you tape off the shoe really well. You will notice there is a little bit of discoloration on this boost here. It's a little bit of reddish because I actually did the Galaxy print on here. Just wanted to see what it would do on the black boost. And of course it didn't really work. So I need to go through and actually just try to scrub that part of it off. But I thought it would have been kind of cool if this Galaxy print was all over the, this section and the midsole which I might do in the future. I might do another Galaxy print with a white boost midsole and then have the whole thing kind of work out like that. I think it would be pretty rad. But um, anyway, that is the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I love this Galaxy Cosmos print. I think that this is just one of the craziest looking prints 
And um, it just, I haven't seen an Ultra Boost with this much kind of flair, I guess, in a sense, even though it's not done perfectly. Um, oh yeah, the other thing is I did do this section right here in white. It is reflective. And although it looks like just muddied garbage, it is galaxy print on here as well. And then also on this one, there's a galaxy print on here. So it's kind of off, but it, it does wrap well into the shoe. Um, and again, these aren't done 100% perfect. There's little parts of it here and there where it's just not done perfectly. And I didn't tape it like perfectly, or there's a little bit of a, a scuff right here. But um, all in all, like, I mean, I'm happy with the results. Considering it's a homemade thing, it's not something made out of the factory. It's just something I made in my front yard. Like, this was pretty fun to be able to do. So, and the longevity is there again, and it's durable enough to wear. Um, it's just, it sucks. Like, I hate not having it like 100% perfect, but um, it is what it is. I had a lot of fun creating something like this. And it's something that I plan on doing more of just because I have so many different projects that I plan on working on. But uh, anyway, what uh, other prints would you guys want to see on an Ultra Boost? I like to stick to an Ultra Boost or an NMD at this point, or just those type of models. Um, if you have suggestions with other shoes, like let me know. I've been experimenting with other shoes with leather, trying to see how the uh, adhesion actually works to make sure it actually stays and is actually durable. Um, but yeah, if you have other prints that you see on their website, shout out to Kansas Hydrographics. If you have other prints that you see on their website, let me know and I will consider uh, doing something in the future. But thanks again for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did like this video and you guys liked the Galaxy Custom that I did, uh, smack the thumbs up button and show you guys the support on the videos. Much appreciated. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel, notification bell to be notified of when my videos go live. And at this point, if you guys want to go ahead and uh, click the screen, see my other videos, feel free to do so. Have a good rest of the day. More videos soon. Peace, guys.